In our endeavors to calculate pi, we have seen infinite series and infinite products. Today we look at another infinite product. This one converges quite rapidly thanks to the nested roots. We have the French mathematician Francois Vieta to thank for this one. The spreadsheet I made to implement this method looks like this. I will explain what's going on in the following slides. For the moment, look at the last column. After 25 terms, we have obtained 14 digits of accuracy past the decimal. That is quite rapid convergence compared to some of the methods we have been studying. Do keep in mind, however, that we are taking square roots at each step. You can do this with Newton's method or some other root finding algorithm. Even if you employ a built in function, the computer is using something similar and that adds to the computational complexity of the overall algorithm. For that reason, we cannot compare this directly, row by row, to another method. It is not an apples to apples comparison. A more thorough analysis would be necessary to make any meaningful conclusions. We start with the square root of 2 in the first row of the second column. For every other row after that, we add 2 and take the square root. This is shown in red and blue. Every value in the third column is simply the one directly to the left divided by 2. That is boxed in green. Now to the orange box. Every such value in the fourth column is the product of entries immediately above and to the immediate left. In this case, those values are boxed in purple and green, respectively. Lastly, to estimate pi, we must take 2 divided by the value boxed in orange. That's because the infinite product converges to 2 over pi. Using color coordination, I've demonstrated the rules for the third row, but they apply to every other row in the table. That's how we can get all the way to 25 terms. You may remember the double angle identity from trigonometry. I've put it here for convenient reference. In the last line, I've simply rewritten it slightly, but it has equivalent meaning. You will see why I did this in the next slide. First we start with the rewritten double angle identity. Notice the sine of one half theta can itself be rewritten using the double angle identity. This is shown in square brackets in the second line. Clean it up a bit in the third line. But now sine of one quarter theta can be rewritten with another double angle identity. That is shown in square brackets in the fourth line. Clean it up in the fifth line. The same pattern continues indefinitely. By the last line, I have simply expressed the general form of what's happening. That general form is repeated in the first line of this slide. Now we are going to divide both sides by theta. I've manipulated 2 to the n to make it match the argument in sine. That is underlined in blue. It turns out that this can go away. I'll explain why in the next slide. The final result we are interested in is shown in the last line. It is an infinite number of cosine terms multiplied together. Remember limits from calculus? We've touched on this one the past couple of lessons. The limit of sine x over x, as x approaches 0, is equal to 1. In the last slide, the argument x was equal to theta over 2 to the n. As n gets really large, x gets really small. As n goes to infinity, x goes to 0. Thus it satisfies this limit. Now we are going to set theta equal to pi over 2. Just plug it into the expression we just derived two slides ago. That leaves us with the expression in the last line. Remember that. From geometry, we know that cosine of pi over 4 is exactly equal to the square root of 2 over 2. That can also be found on a unit circle. This has been covered in previous lessons. We have also seen the half angle identity in previous lessons. Here we will employ it to our desired aim. Cosine of pi over 8 and cosine of pi over 16 are calculated as seen here. Pause the video if you care to follow through the algebra. I will not explain each step in detail. 
Just notice that we are getting the nested roots seen earlier. Hmm, interesting. Now we just substitute those nested roots for their corresponding cosine. That leaves us with the infinite product seen on the first screen. Wow! So there you have it. More or less, this is how Francois Vieta derived this infinite product hundreds of years ago. It converges quite rapidly and therefore is a pretty good method to find digits of pi. What do you think about all this? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share with a friend. I appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you again.